One of AMD's biggest marketing points when announcing 3D Vcache back in 2022 was that it actually replaces the need for really fast memory, something that you need in competitive gaming. High bandwidth, low latency. Especially low latency is the key to high FPS and low input lag in these competitive shooters such as Call of Duty, Fortnite, Marvel Rivals, all of that. I really remember back in 2021 actually when everyone was rocking 1900Ks or 5950Xs Everyone who had a 1000K and like 4400 megahertz CL like 16 RAM was literally destroying a 5950X with ease. But even though AMD says that we don't need really, really fast memory, we obviously still want to have that fast memory. And there is a performance boost, as I have shown before, increasing your memory speed, increasing your FCLK or Infinity Fabric. Infinity Fabric is just like the interconnect between the CCDs itself. So like if you have an eight core, you have one CCD. If you have like a 12 or a 16, you have two of them. And then the IO die itself, which has like the IMC and all the different controllers on it. So what is the fastest memory that you can put on an AMD CPU or just any modern DDR5 system in general? We have two different types of memory that we'll be testing today. We have two by 16 ADI. This is typically like your 8,000 kits or a little bit of your higher end kits. It's not actually super expensive though, as well as two by 24. This is M die. These are both ICs by Hynix. Two by 24 is a little bit more expensive. It's not as common. This is these 48 gigabyte configurations. It really is an odd number of RAM actually. On something like a two by 16 kit, each of these ICs, these little black squares will have about two, they'll have exactly, sorry, two gigabytes of DRAM on each versus with a 48, they'll each have three. These both are kind of considered the best options if you're building a new PC today. You might know the MDI kit actually as the kit that I was able to hit 8,400 megahertz CL38 back on my 1400KS and Z790i Lightning. It seems that certain motherboards are actually starting to prefer MDI and are actually able to overclock them more. I don't know if that's just a, because the manufacturers want to push 48 gigabytes. They're seeing more people choose that amount of RAM. I don't know, but there definitely is some overclocking benefits to it. An MDI can definitely run faster speeds, but there is a little bit of a negative part of that. The latency typically is not as low in a benchmark. While 2x16, you lose a decent bit of memory, but in exchange, you hope to get lower latency mostly because of the TRFC timing being much lower, if you know what that is. It's the refresh timing. It's just basically how fast the memory can refresh and put something back in. For you guys who want the absolute fastest and maximum performance out of your computer, which one should you buy? But Chamber, I don't, I don't want to build the PC. I don't want to overclock it myself. I have the solution for you. Go to chambertech.net. I am now selling pre-tuned bundles delivered right to your door. That's right, the fastest CPU, the fastest RAM, the best motherboards, the best storage delivered right to you. All you have to do is put it in a case with a graphics card. It's the easy part. That's right, maximum performance right to your door. And if you already have a PC and you just wanna get more out of it, you can hit the link down below as well. We have PC optimization packages available down below as well. The system that I used today is my maxed out gaming PC, my 9800X3D direct die, running PBO, my 4090 gigabyte gaming OC with the XOC BIOS. I guess that's the one thing that's technically considered not the fastest, but it's still the second fastest graphics card on the market. And then my Asus X870E Strix-E is my motherboard. What makes this motherboard special is Asus's patented Nitro Path technology. This promises to get better frequencies and better stability, less signal integrity loss on a 4DIM motherboard, basically making it so that you don't have to worry about choosing between a 4DIM and a 2DIM motherboard. Super duper important for getting something like 8,000 megahertz or higher actually stable. For 2 by 16 ADI, I was able to get 6,400 megahertz CL32 at 2133 FCLK. This is the fastest I could get it stable. I chose not to do a two to one overclock, which is typically those 7,600 megahertz and faster because I am of the belief that unless you are running 8,000 megahertz two or higher, two to one doesn't actually matter at all. And we'll see that coming up. Two by 24 MDI was tested at 6,400 CL32, 2133 as well. 
but also 8,000 megahertz, 2,000 FCOK, CL38. Why is the FCOK actually slower though for 8,000? This is because you properly want to sync the actual memory frequency and the FCOK itself. This does allow for typically higher performance and if not, I just seen less irregular irregularities or weird issues with it. For one to one mode, which is typically like your 6400 to 6000 mode, you are gonna need to set this in BIOS to make sure it's equals. I'll show the setting right here for you guys. Um, you are gonna want to take your memory frequency, so let's say 6000 divided by three, you have 2000, that's your proper FC okay. For something like two to one mode though, you are going to want to divide it by four. So for example, on 8,000 megahertz divided by four, you have 2,000 FC okay. Two to one mode is typically for like 7,600 and above. There is kind of this dead space between like 6,600 and 7,600 where you should not be using any of those memory frequencies at all because you will be getting terrible performance and it would be better to either overclock it up or downclock it. Starting out with the benchmarks, looking at IMLC, you'll actually see that the two 6400 setups have very, very similar bandwidth, um, with 8000 actually having about four gigabytes, three to four gigabytes a second less in bandwidth, something I was not expecting. Typically, you increase frequencies because you're gonna get higher bandwidth, but when looking at latency, you'll see that they're very close, once again, with the 6400 actually being the exact same with 8,000 being one nanoseconds lower. So we really need to see, do games into the benchmarks that we tested today care more about bandwidth or care more about one nanosecond less? Shadow of the Tomb Raider coming up, AKA my Discord overclocking nerds favorite benchmark. I swear this is all they play. <laughs> but it shows a narrow win for two by 16 ADI. Both are within margin of error. So I'm not gonna say like, oh, I got three more FPS on two by 16, it wins. It's like, it's a really high number. You're gonna be getting basically the exact same gaming experience with all three setups. Cyberpunk 2077 actually shows the exact same thing with average FPS, but when looking at the two by 24, 6400 megahertz setup, you'll see that the lows are way worse. And if I was gonna to have to pick a winner though, I would choose 2x16, 6400 megahertz ADI just because of the higher lows and the closer, even though the average is, I guess, the lowest, the lows are better and all the averages are within 2 FPS of themselves. If you can notice the difference between 265 and 263 FPS, Spider Man Remastered is an easy win for 2x16 ADI, 6400 megahertz. The average 1% and 0.1% are all faster and make especially 8000 CL38 look terrible. Spider-Man, especially with ray tracing enabled, is a very bandwidth heavy benchmark. It's something that shows that DDR5 is actually very important and that bandwidth is super big deal. Even in these scenarios when you're thinking, okay, ray tracing on, this is 100% going to be a GPU bound scenario. I do remember actually back in like 2022 when this game came out, I had a bunch of people, including myself actually, who because of this game upgraded to DDR5 because I got significantly higher FPS. Counter-Strike 2 is a game that literally performed the exact same. Um, competitive shooters, they don't care about memory. It all fits in, this game fits in the cache. So it doesn't matter if I had faster clock speeds, it would be better, but like, they all fit in the cache. So the memory did nothing. So it was pretty useless, it was a tie. So I guess if you play competitive shooters and need a lot of RAM, Fortnite is the one game where two by 16, 6400 ADI didn't do great. The 0.1% lows actually take a massive hit compared to the others. When you're 40 FPS at least lower, there's an issue there. I did three runs of every single benchmark. I re-ran, I tried to test it it happened. My guess is that for some reason when I ran it, either the map had an issue or there was a shader compilation because I ran 2 by 16 first. I guess 2 by 24, 6400 megahertz is the winner with 8,000 kind of trailing a little bit. Now for our last benchmark, Call of Duty. We have a massive win in the lows for 2 by 16, 6400 megahertz ADI over both of the 2 by 24 MDI setups. 8,000 actually does beat the 6400 setup in this benchmark but they both look kind of slow when comparing to two by 16, especially in the lows. Something that for Call of Duty and any competitive shooter 
is the most important metric. Arguably, I could remove the average FPSs from all of my benchmarks and we could still come to the exact same conclusions. Now, one thing I didn't actually realize until I was later looking back at the footage was that the power draw on the 2x24 setups was significantly higher. In something like Shadow of the Tomb Raider in certain spots, it was pulling 20% higher power. Now, the CPU is still very highly efficient though. Don't get me wrong. I mean, pulling 110 watts in a game is not something that I'm gonna complain about. I came from an Intel CPU. Comparing 110 watts to 90 watts, it seems like a pretty massive deal just because you have it in a different kit of RAM. That's also faster. Um, but the real issue though is that this can cause higher temps and this can cause, especially when using something like Precision Boost Overdrive, you're gonna have that down clocking once you hit about 70 degrees in games. And I don't really have like a explanation almost for this. The voltages that I used were very similar, if not identical. So it isn't like the voltages are causing it. It's either something with the IMC being hit much harder with two by 24, which is not what I actually have seen on other platforms, but it's just something to kind of keep in mind. But in conclusion, what should you buy? The honest and only answer for me is going to be two by 16 eight I. It's cheaper, it's faster, it allows you to overclock and literally a $110 kit can get you this performance. You also don't have to worry about two to one mode just because it's not really needed. If you're trying to max out two to one mode and you're getting something like an X870E Apex, which I don't really see a point for, I guess I could see a point for two by 24 where you can kind of blow past the FCOK of only 2000. Or if you're multitasking or playing very system memory heavy games where you need a lot of memory, that obviously is gonna be an option for two by 24, or you could always just blow past it and go to two by 32 dual rank 8i kits, which can perform very well on AMD. I'm currently looking to test one. I'll leave affiliate links down below for both two by 16 and two by 24 kits that I do recommend down below, as well as my CPU and all my PC specs. But let me know down below what kind of RAM you're running and if you are contemplating switching the amount of RAM or the RAM setup that you have. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Hit the like button down below, subscribe, join the Discord if you haven't already. I do have all of the benchmark runs in a video privated just for my supporters so that they can see the true results. They've had it for days already. I hope you guys have enjoyed and I will see you guys later. Peace.